In the previous episode, we talked about our escalator metaphor that we have been using in one-on-one -on -one coaching and we have been seeing amazing results. Tune in to this week's episode to find out the top two reasons people don't take actions. Yes, we'll give you the top two reasons why people don't take actions that would actualize their dreams. We'll also give our final technique on how to do what you don't feel like doing in our next episode. The biggest reason people don't take actions towards their dream is deep down, they don't actually believe they can achieve it. Do you have a dream that you want to achieve? How long do you think it will take you to get really close to it? Do you have a plan on how to get it? Are you really not taking action? Most likely, the reason is that you don't believe that it's possible for you to achieve it. You may think that the dream is achievable, but not by you. So let's see how do you overcome this. Let's ask yourself, do you have a strategy? Do you know the next best steps to get closer to your goal? If not, get it. Right? You can Google, you can read books, you can take courses. There really is no excuse not to have a strategy these days. Now, so if you have a strategy, you know what to do, then is there any other reason that you think you cannot achieve your dreams? Did you check out the episode on amazing things that you have already achieved? If not, check it out. It will reassure you that you are capable of doing great things. Now, is it because of some past experience, some lost that you have faced that you are not taking action towards your dreams? In our previous episode, we talked about how to use the escalator metaphor to deal with any sort of losses. Breakups, divorces, losing a loved one, losing a job, whatever it is, take a look at our escalator metaphor. It will, inshallah, help you. What meaning are you giving to the losses that you have had? Are those meanings empowering or limiting? Who is stopping you from changing those meanings? Now, on the topic of mastering emotions, do you even believe that you can master your own emotions? If you are suffering from depression, do you think it's curable? Let us remind you of what we talked about in our earlier episode that the Messenger of Allah has told us that there is no disease that does not have a cure. Do you understand what that means? That means that there is a cure for everything. Who is saying this? The Messenger of Allah. The Messenger of the One who is the Lord of Heavens and Earth and whatever is between them. Now, do you really believe there is a cure? If not, then you may want to revisit and recheck yourself. So if you believe there is a cure, are you seeking your cure? Are you trying what will benefit you? Are you trying that consistently? Or are you giving up? Are you using the power of dua consistently every day? Are you using the power of Quran consistently every day? We have been talking about these two powerful spiritual tools in our earlier episodes. Review them and ask yourself, why are you not applying them? If you're not applying them, then isn't it like self-oppression? At the end of this episode, we'll share with you one specific dua that is guaranteed to work for sure because it is backed up by the messenger of Allah, the messenger of the one who is the creator of everyone and everything, the messenger of the one without whose permission there is no cure. Once again, we are not saying to stop medicine. We discussed what should one on medication do in our previous episode. Please review that so you do not misunderstand our advice regarding medicine. The second biggest reason people don't make progress towards their dreams is they actually don't have any dream. It is what they use as a cover-up for people. So someone will say, you know what, I plan to study such and such field, I plan to get a degree, I plan to learn this skill, but what they're doing is just saying something that will sound nice, that's it. They really don't want it. Or they may have some sort of an inner conflict such that they're afraid to take risk and they still want to run their own business. They don't believe in their own ideas. They don't want to spend time and money on their own ideas. They don't invest in themselves and they want others to invest. Really ask yourself, what are your true dreams and passions that you want to pursue? Now you may ask, how is having dreams going to help me? 
Well, think about it. If you wake up and you do not have any purpose that excites you, you do not have a strategy or action steps on how to achieve what excites you, you would worry more and more about small petty things. You won't look at the bigger picture. You will practically have no value for your time. You would not be making conscious choices of how you spend your time, which people you hang out with, which people you listen to, which type of food you feed your body, and which type of thoughts and content you feed your brain. I hope you can now see the connection on why the planning and identity exercises that we asked you to do in episode 1 and 2 are super important in mastering your life. Go back and revisit those exercises. Now, check this out. Sa'ad bin Abi Maqas radiallahu an was recorded to have said from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the supplication of the noon when he invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the darkness inside the big fish none has the right to be worshipped but you, O Allah glorified are you perfect are you Far away from any imperfection or any deficiency are you, O Allah. Truly, I have been of the wrongdoers. Now, the Messenger of Allah is saying that no Muslim invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this supplication except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to him. Subhanallah. Look at this. So this is the promise of the Messenger of Allah. Right? It's a very simple, beautiful dua. And let's, have, let's be clear, let's be honest with ourselves. How many times do we actually use it? I'll say this in Arabic for you. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al So you are affirming that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And you're glorifying Allah, you're declaring that Allah is removed from any imperfection. Allah is far away from any imperfection or any deficiency. Now imagine the one who is away from any imperfection, any deficiency. That means he can do everything. He can make you come out of your trouble. He can give you goals. He can give you dreams. He can inspire you. He can motivate you. He can take away your laziness. He can take away your depression. So let's consistently ask and beg Allah to give it to us. Now, let's take a look at a simple technique to change your physiology, to change your psychology. Okay, now when you're feeling depressed, give us two minutes. Write this down. Practice it. Script it out, give us two minutes and do this. Smile. Change your posture into a power posture and smile as big as you can. Hold this position for 60 seconds. If you don't know what a power posture is, look it up. Google it, you'll see images of it. Pick a pose and smile as big as you can and do it for 60 seconds. After that 60 seconds, either take a walk, a skip rope, do jumping jacks, do push-ups, if you have physical limitations, then do as close to it as possible while being safe. If you did not even try, just notice why are you not trying this technique. And in the next episode, we'll shed some light on why we don't do what we should be doing.